Photography is incredibly omnipresent in today's society. It's a constant, it's accessible to all, yet it didn't exist 200 years ago. So how did it all start? The word photography translates to drawing with light, derived from the Greek word photos, meaning light, and graphe, meaning to draw. However, several centuries before the term was first used, in 1839, is where the tale of photography begins, with the ideas found in two distant sciences, optics and chemistry. The forerunner of photography was the camera obscura that was demonstrated in the late 16th century by an Italian scientist and writer. Gambastia della Porta described it in his writings as a dark chamber or room with a hole or lens in one wall through which images of objects outside were projected on the opposite wall. In 1727, German professor Jan Schultz proved that the darkening of silver salts was caused by light instead of heat. He was able to demonstrate this by using sunlight to record words on salt. With the discoveries of both Schultz and Porta, a Frenchman was able to produce the first photograph in the 19th century. Joseph Nopis took the first picture in 1826 through his invention of heliography or sun drawing. He coated a pewter plate with light-sensitive solution of asphalt and lavender oil and placed it in a camera obscura. The image was taken from an upstairs window in Nopis' estate in Burgundy. However, this form of photography was incredibly impractical as the exposing time for his image took a total of 8 hours. Louis Daguerre partnered with Napice for four years after hearing of his success. In 1835, three years after Napice's death, Daguerre discovered that an image forms on a plate iodized with silver and that it could be developed by exposing it to mercury vapor. Exposure times were a mere 30 minutes. However, he wasn't able to make the images permanent until 1837 when he added table salt to his formula. William Henry Fox Talbot was working on his own photographic method, photogenic drawing. By 1835, he also had a working process. Talbot made paper light sensitive by soaking it in common salts and silver nitrate. The resulting negative image could be used to make any number of positives. However, his method of fixing the image was unsuccessful until 1839 when his friend Sir John Herschel suggested fixing with sodium thiosulfate. Upon the publication of Daguerre and Talbot's processes, photography parlors began popping up across the world. As these processes were not widely financially available to the public and were often time consuming. Over the years, many advantages were made to the daguerreotype process through the creation of different lenses, portability, and chemical accelerations. However, the next big advancement was a cyanotype process invented by Sir John Herschel in 1842. He was looking for a way to introduce color into photography. As stated in a letter that he wrote to Talbot, I conceive it is possible to obtain rays totally exempt from any color but the elementary one wanted. Herschel was able to create images in a blue tint, however his process was not widely used until the 1880s. Photography was revolutionized by the wet colandine process invented in 1851 by Frederick Scott Archer. His new process was 20 times faster than the previous one. Paper prints were made from glass plate negatives coated in nitrocellulose and ether. It was immediately universally adopted, replacing the daguerreotype process. However, the image had to be taken and treated immediately after the prepping the glass, which again made it inaccessible to the public. Many spin-offs of the wet colandine process were made including tintypes and ambryotypes, but they did not succeed at eliminating the immediacy issue of the process, that is, until the 1870s. In 1871, Richard Leach Maddox suggested suspending silver bromide in a gelatin emulsion. This led to the mass production of factory-produced dry plates in 1878, marking the beginning of the modern era of photography. These plates were roughly 60 times more sensitive than those of the previous process. For the first time, cameras didn't need to be on tripods because the exposure time was so low. Eastman Dry Plate Company released the Kodak camera where anyone could shoot 100 circular pictures and send it off to be developed. Photography was affordable for the first time ever at roughly $25. While photography did continue to advance beyond this point to what we see today, that doesn't mean these processes aren't still used. Modern artists and photographers are paying respect to the processes of the past to produce work today that can be seen in galleries, online, and all over the world. Just because it's the past doesn't mean that it's gone forever. And that's how photography began.